What is happening, y'all? Welcome to part six of the walkthrough. Um, as a reminder, if you haven't been doing your vestiges, wake up IO from her nap over here and burn on through them. Um, we're going to actually talk about some of the rather potent skills that you can pick. Uh, as you can see, all I have left is Hermes, but you should have a bunch of Atlas stuff as well as a bunch of Assassin stuff by now. Uh, in particular, if you are playing a strength build, having gone through the Atlas stuff, you gain access to not only the two-handed sword mastery that I talked about in the previous episode, but you should also have guard reversal, which is an incredibly potent ability. Basically, while this is up, if an enemy attacks you, it just interrupts their attack and staggers them, allowing you to get a free follow-up. So a very, very solid ability there. Uh, moving on, we are going to teleport back to the bottomless shore, and it is time to take on the next boss, the invading executioner. Now this boss is uh, very much anti-mobility. Uh, she applies a slow effect, so to help compensate for that, we're actually going to switch things up a little bit. You should have access to the Hunter Blood Code, and this is kind of a makeshift upgrade to Caster. Um, but the main reason we're using the, uh, the uh, Hunter Blood Code together. is you can both put on our GXH Assault, which is already plus three. This gives us a Decent amount of dark gifts, which will help our casts along. And then the very basic cast that you already have, Blazing War, Firestorm, how we put Bloodshot in on there as well. Uh, that should be more than I'm enough sure to get you through this. We're going to go on and put these on as well, just since those will help Yakumo out. Uh, passives for those curious. Health boost, stamina boost, weapon drain rating. And then I have Dark Impulse from Caster. Now, as I mentioned, this fight is on, all about ahead. mobility. Uh, if you have anti-slows, put those on your bar. And this boss essentially just tries to apply slow to you constantly. So having a faster setup is going to help a lot here. If you can like run quick around. mobility, that's even better, but you can definitely get by with normal. Now, all in all, it's just, it's a very challenging fight for a strength build. So your rotten mistle will be right here. You'll have a piece of steel right here, which you can use that to get your very first weapon up to plus four, which we haven't done yet. Fire. Um, run on in, you'll get a cutscene, and then you have the stripper boss. And the reason I suggest you run a faster class here is she is all about tossing out crap at you. But all in all, it's a much easier fight if you are, uh, if you're ranged, essentially. Um, so for the weapon that I'm suggesting here, we are actually using the Devour Bayonet that we found previously down in the depths. That's going to allow you to pull on in Biker very easily. Boss has her stripper pull attack, which you just saw there. She also has a dash attack, which can be pretty deadly if you let it hit you. There's the dash attack. Pop that anti-slow. Try and get a couple heals up here. Now she's starting to get on in there and draw back some hiker. The thing is, I haven't been leveling up any of my caster stuff, so keep that in mind. I've been pretty much playing as a strength build uh, the entirety of this playthrough. So that just goes to show how easy it is to just quickly swap between classes and do something that you haven't really been focused on. Close down there, coming on down to the wire with that thing. Uh, but if you take her out, you'll get the Assassin's Sickle, which is actually a pretty solid pole arm. Uh, it has some ice damage worked on into it automatically, and a pretty unique heavy attack that mimics the charge ability that she does. What so burn through these cutscenes. Just a couple things related to Mia and her little brother. 
and we'll get the first part of the Fion Vestige. Um, so we're going to switch on back, back to Atlas, go back to my sword. We're going to take the Iker from that boss, and we will use our two steel to upgrade okay. Zweihander on up. And from here, first thing we're going to do is go back to the parking garage. Now we got two different quests to knock out here. Uh, one is at the parking garage. One is back over near the, the pits. I can already see the little people. Hold on. Talk to him. You're this is the guy from before that we did a quest for. He's going to talk about how he's too scared to go forward and he needs to get a weapon. The weapon is right there. So we need to run on past everything. Just head on over here and pick this up. Hey, that's don't even need to worry about fighting stuff. Most of this isn't going to be able to catch up to you. And not too soon, we're going to get a major class upgrade. Atlas is a really good class for strength, but uh, we get a couple Sorry. episodes here. We'll gain Moving access up. to the Queen Slayer Blood Code, which is incredibly potent. Did you find this? I owe you a debt. I need to train the horrors for Bobby. Yep, so anyway, do that. Um, and then afterwards, we got a bit of a run. We need to make our way all the way back to the big hole that was in the ground. See kind of on the mini-map, there's another little this person icon. Must have been really busy once. Don't let them back. We're actually just gonna sprint straight through over there. You know? I mean, this, this you can kill everything if you want. But there's really no reason to, to fight these weak ass enemies. Basically, he's going to talk about how he's lost. You sure you don't fall before we can get down? And we're going to go this way. I do not want to. And then hit the elevator. Uh, if you want, it's actually faster to just use a vivifier here, and then go to the Howling Pits very first missile, and the item you need is basically right there. So you can do that, and it's a bit quicker. But I'm not trying to just waste a vivifier to save some time. Boing, boing. This game is a big fan of booby physics. Sorry. So we'll Moving out. run on around and grab the dog tags that he wants, and then we're going to get started on our next area, the dried up trenches. And thankfully from here on out, uh, you can pretty much run a strength build for the rest of the game. And well uh, in the dark. it'll be pretty, pretty potent. Hey, uh, that lost blast boss in particular, I was hoping to originally do it with a strength build, and that's kind of what I had done in the walkthrough prep, but pulling that boss off with a build like this is very tricky just because you're already at a baseline of slow. And so if you get hit Hold with on. slow while you're already on, slow, it pulls you down to a crawl and it's just not fun. So after attempting to record this episode, I said, you know what, this probably isn't the right recommendation for a walkthrough. Decided to uh, start things off again, just swapping over to Caster. But like I said, that's one of the beauties of Code Vein. I mean, as you saw quite literally, you know, 
strength build. Now I'm a caster. And it's that, that's it. You switch your blood code around. Make sure to put on some passives, swap your weapons, and you're a whole new class. And that's probably the thing I like the most about this game. You know, initially when I started playing it, I wasn't the biggest fan. And once I started uh, switching between blood codes very frequently, I found myself enjoying it a lot more. That dog tag you have belongs to one of my friends. Then one of my other friends is in danger. Yeah, the gov so we hiked out here to look for blood beats. No. All right, so that's done. Um, now we just need to get back to a missile, and we're going to head over to the dried-up trenches. Don't run too far ahead. Okay, Yakumo. I won't run too far ahead. You got a fork. Which way will it be? How's this? Uh, if you do decide you want to use a vivifier just to save some runs here, you know that vivifiers are like instantaneous. Like the split second you use it, you're already immune to damage. Um, I know those coming from a Souls background, you know that when you use a Homeward Bone, there's like a split second before you, you're, you're really uh, immune. So you gotta kind of you know, roll away and get to safety. That's not the case here. The second you hit that, you're gone. So anyway, over to the dried up trenches. Uh, this is the zone that comes after the butterfly for those that having trouble remembering. Scrolls notes. All right, so we have an enemy that is going to be immediately up ahead around the corner here. Let's pin down the source. Bring it any time. He is guarding a lost shard. You have to take this area is a little tricky, not nearly as bad as the previous one. Um, we're going to go to the right climber right here. Just give him a second. And see Daisy. There you go. Grab the freezing cartridge. Um, we have an anti slow right there, but there is a baddie that is kind of hiding above, so we're going to wait for him to come down. Pick that up. Um, let's see. We have one near the boxes. There he is. And then after the boxes, we're going to drop down. And you can kind of see where we're going right here. So just drop, and an enemy is right behind us. And we'll get that first rotten missile. Just making traversing this area that much easier. Um, so we're going to follow up the path and then up a ladder for three more enemies and the first part of the Dark Seeker Vestige, which is going to be to head on uh, basically up. an upgrade to caster. It's like a, a status poison based caster, but even against the uh, compared to regular caster, it's just more damage, you know, higher stat scaling and whatnot. Uh, the big reds can be kind of tricky. As you can see, we can't even uh, poise break them with our ability. The purple guys aren't bad, though. I mean, they seem really intimidating at first, but these are essentially the equivalent of, like, the Praying Mantis monsters for this zone. You're here. It's a real gem. Vestige. Uh, let's see. So we're going to go over here and get the Iker Concentrate that we passed previously. Then we have an MJ-109 right over here. Alright, so, at this split, first we're going to go to the left, and right here at this wood plank, if you look down, That's what I call drop on down, it's going to be a big guy coming on up, um, before the area opens up, guarding a broadsword plus three, can be deceiving I guess okay there's our broadsword plus three we're gonna take the ladder up and we're going to follow the path and go down a second ladder for another big red guy Hold on. Uh, this is that room we just cleared that had the enemies just to kind of give some uh, connectivity
Hang on, this is where we had that guy that uh, dropped down on us. Want to down this ladder. And kill him. I don't know why this guy's over here just guarding a dagger, but that's the way it is. So we're going to pop out back where that guy dropped down on us. Okay. Um, so we're going to run back to that split again. We're going to go left a second time. Except this time we're not going to take that path. So we're going to go over here and get a slow vaccine. Pick up something we can use? We have quite a few enemies up ahead, so we're going to try and... Because this is kind of, as you can see, it's kind of a thin area to fight in. We're going to try and pull our enemies on in. Just make things a little bit easier not fighting them on such poor terrain. Another one. My notes real fast. Bring it any time. That inhibit. Grab this little thing here. And we got enemies hiding behind these boxes, so just be ready for them. Alright, and now we're going to go past the boxes and do drop on down. Headed? We're gonna follow this around, kill this guy. Queen Iron, go up here. I see something. Kill another baddie. And we have another rotten missile. And now, as you can see, we have the majority of this zone uh, now determined. So, uh, we're going to drop down, pick up a vivifier. Uh, we're going to loop around to the right. Drop down to get another blood veil. Don't fall here. A lot of interweaving paths here. This is more complicated than I expected. Let's open it up and see, shall it's we? Night Spear. Um, all in all, it's it's a pretty decent choice for stinger types. Let's see, C in dexterity, C in mind. Not necessarily the best stats, but not exactly bad. Uh, so from there, let's see. Look around. Night Spear and chest. Then we have an MJ109 right here. Gonna drop down again. This way and take the left path. No harm in or another 109. The middle path doesn't go anywhere, but you can take this to essentially drop down um, onto that guy, but we're not going to be going down that path just yet. So we want to go over here and grab another shiny with the blood cartridge. And then over here, we want to kill this guy. Take this ladder down. Now, over here, there's going to be an enemy that you can farm if you want early on in the game. Uh, the sword he is using is one of the best one-handed swords in the game. Very, very potent sword. Very fast move set on it. And as you know, items will drop as you kill stuff. Look at that first kill on him, Arjun Wolf Blade. R and Jesus has blessed me. Uh, but as you can see, C Strength, C Dexterity, D on Mind Power, um, and probably the thing that makes this thing so brutal is it has it has basically the fastest sword move set. 
So it's very, very quick. It's very spammy. Um, and just all in all, a excellent, excellent choice. The veil we just got is the uh, casting veil. Raven, as you can see, B plus and willpower. So that is your go-to choice if you're playing as a caster. And a regen hey, activation that's... factor. Um, if you want to get over here for farming this guy, there's actually a fairly quick route you can take that I'm going to discuss briefly right now. Um, you'll, the rest of this area will be covered in, in a little bit here. But... So this long path right down here, where you see that guy that's standing right below him is a missile. And we're going to work our way around to get it versus just going straight this way. Um, but for some reason, if you're like super, super low, Stay essentially what you would do okay. is just run straight that way. There's a shiny. When you see that drop down, and then there's a little path that you'll follow around and uh, it'll bring you underneath him. So from that missile, though, obviously, you know, you can just run past those guys, run up here, and then just curve around ignoring stuff to get to the ladder. And then from the ladder, you can farm up your Arjun Wolf Blade. Um, let's see. Making sure your gear is good. Scroll on my notes on up. Okay, so we are going to track back to that first time. This is where we originally went. I'm just gonna head on this way and get back over to that split. Sorry. Which is right below Moving us out. here. See, we can kind of drop down behind and get some enemies, but we're already kind of uh, prepared to just take this from the front. Find better ground. Plunge attack there. Go that one. Swarming today. Heal on up. Anchor concentrate. Let's keep it up. Um, let's see, shield or big red, fire spitter as well. Um, so you'll see your first fire spitter. These well. things are pretty annoying. Be coming up in just a second. Not very resilient, but they are annoying. Time. Looks like somebody dropped an item. Good stuff. You have to take whatever you can oh, use. Never mind. That should have been there. Chemical light. As well. Okay, so we have another big red that's guarding a shard up ahead. Let me just Thanks, double buff friend. here just to make this even easier. And now we've essentially just worked our way around uh, to that path. So right here, this is the uh, it's that path that we're gonna drop down. Numbers like that are a hassle. Don't let them come on in. And we're actually going to run straight past these guys just to show you the missile strategy. So run. See the shiny. Roll. Should be one more guy. There. Let's run past him. And here we are. Very rude. This guy's actually a decent farm source. He can drop uh, all kinds of stuff. Steel, iron, MJ-109s. And he's he really easy to get to as well. So if you want, you can know, walk right up and just keep backstabbing this poor guy. Um, and all in all, this is actually a really decent farming. We're about to, to wrap this episode up. Uh, but quickly, just to show that if for some reason you are trying to farm, essentially... Uh, this is like a, a good early game farm loop because you can climb up top here. Time for another round. You can 
can go around and get a backstab on this guy or just kill him. This big one, you would drop and get a plunge on. Then it's just killing little guys. We have this big guy. Kill all that stuff. The ship is stuck on that thorn. And then, same as before, just go right over here and drop down. And you can just keep running this loop, nets you a pretty fair amount. I want to say it's like 5,000 or so Iker. Um, so if you're, you know, trying to mainly if you're trying to pick up an ability or something, you're just a little bit of Iker short. This is just a nice little loop to accomplish that. Uh, so we're gonna wrap up this episode here, though. Uh, there is a decent chunk of this area left, not too much, um, but enough to to close on out here. Uh, so in the next episode. We are going to finish up the remainder of this zone in addition to taking on the boss and then following up on that, of course, we'll have some side quests that we got to do. So stay tuned and I will catch you soon enough with more.